Alrighty folks, how are we doing? Today you see we're going to go ploughing, but uh, not with the usual tractor on the front of the dowsel. We've got the T7 on it because the TW is still a little bit poorly. I've essentially sorted out the back end, a few little bit more jobs to do on it, but um, and it's going to get a full service as well, so it's obviously still not got a lot of oil in it. There's no point filling it up until I've done the service, so she's essentially could go back to work, but um, there's no point until I've done the service on her. I wasn't filling the back end up to drop it out again, so uh, yeah, so it should be interesting. We're going to have the DP7E on uh, T7 today. So anyway, let's get up the field and uh, see what sort of job it makes. Well, it's the first time I've had this plough, or my plough, on a tractor other than the TW. So let's see how it goes. But essentially, setting up a plough, you want everything the same. You want um, even tyre pressures, rear tyre pressures, they want to be the same. Your drop arms, they want to be the same length. Um, turnover stops, they want to be the same length. Um, again, your rear depth stops, they want to be, so everything wants to be exactly the same. That's providing your plough does plough exactly the same both ways. Um, I mean, older ploughs like this, I mean, it's probably not 100% straight. I mean, you look down that, uh, that row of points, and it does look pretty straight to be fair. So um, that's where you, that's your starting point. So everything is basically equal on it. The only thing I do like, is I just like the back furrow to touch the ground before the front one does, just a bit. So that's just touched there. I'm just gonna wind this top link in a little bit and then we'll then we'll see what it's like. Oh well we'll do a God yeah. We'll do a um We'll do a couple of passes so we can get in the furrow and then we'll see we'll see what uh, see what it looks like. Let's see what that's like now when I lift it. We'll go one more turn. Basically what you're looking for is um, when you're ploughing, you should be able to take that top link off. The top link shouldn't do anything. It should just float in that hole. Um, I do prefer the ones that got the, the slotted hole so that it does give it a bit more float, but um, you get it about right and you're not far off. But that's essentially what you do. The top link doesn't do anything when you're in the ground. It's all on them. And the plough should just be level and, and uh, top link should just float. So anyway, let's get it in the ground and we'll do a few ups and downs and see what it's like. Oh, I'm just going to draw on an angle. Just a slight angle. Drop you down. Do a few revs. Didn't take much pulling. Although we don't want it in 12th though, I shouldn't think. Start up in 9th. Push the plough in. So we're gonna um, just do a few shots, and yeah, you know, just we need to at least do a down and then come back up to get in the furrow, so that we know um, there's no use point doing any checking or measurements until we're in the furrow. So uh, we'll put a nice straight line with a bit of luck, which is never easy though when you're wearing a egg cam because it's right <laughs> right in front of my eyes at the minute Uh, 
Um, even with the, uh, the wider tyres, you know, this New Orleans running uh, 650s where the TW's 520s um, on the back. So you've got a wider tyre to fill up behind. And it's still, as you can see there, smashing up all right. I've got the front for adjusted all the way over, which is how I tend to have it for the TW anyway. Um, which is a useful feature on these plows. That, uh, that ram over there, that goes in and out and that angles the plow around. Just That decides how much, um, or dictates how much soil is thrown into the furrow. And then, like I say at the minute, it's right over at the minute and uh, it's chucking as much soil as it can. So, the biggest problem I've got, as you can see, uh, I'm getting some soil, soil stuck to the mould board, which is a pain. Because then again, that um, alters how they throw the soil over. Um, although the boards are shining up, and this is quite good ground to shine them up, down the bottom, down there is um, it's quite gravelly, which is lovely to shine the boards up. Um, but it's still just sticking a bit. As you can see, they've got a bit of a shine to them, but nothing too major. They keep sticking. And that does, like I say, it does affect how they throw the soil over, and it can make quite a big difference on how the plough pulls and um, what sort of finish you leave. But it's still leaving. Um, Still leaving a nice even finish so I'm not getting out every bout to clean them but I'm getting out every few bouts just to keep uh, kick it off and uh, keep them shined up and eventually they will get shiny enough and it shouldn't stick with a bit of luck so as you can see we're we're burying we are burying um, trash quite nicely you can't see any trash on the top um, we're doing 8k, 5% wheel slip, 26 litres an hour, diesel will set about 17, 1750 revs. So, yes, I mean, it's not a bother for this tractor, I mean, this tractor really could take another, quite easy to take another furrow off this sort of ground. Um, well, I mean, I did use the 4 or 6 furrow DP7 with the TW. It is a bit much on heavy ground, but uh, this would cope, but then again it copes in all conditions with a 5 fire. Which is sort of the difference, like, you know, you can, um, you know, you can go in on the heavier soils in the wetter conditions and still pull 5 easily, whereas when you've got that 6th one on, it um, makes it hard work like. I'm just going to plough this headland in uh, before I go any further across the field. Um, sometimes I do, I do leave all the headlands till till last. Sometimes I will um, work headlands as I go, like I am going to today. Um, yeah, it just depends what sort of mood I'm in, really. As long as you, you know, leave it nicely ploughed, I don't think it really matters which way you do it. Some of you are possibly wondering why, um, why I've got the dowsel on the back uh, instead of the KV, which is the farm's, uh, you know, normal plough like. Um, well, the pure reason is, is that uh, my dowsel was far easier to get to. Um, the caverlum was a bit blocked in um, at the minute in the shed, so I uh, only had to move a couple of trailers and we had access to my, my dowsel, so um, stuck that on. And they're both five furrows, both 14 inch, so it didn't really matter either way. Old Betfield still plays up now and again. 
Like I say, um, I think I, s I said on the last time I was playing with it, there's a um, previous owner on one of the depth stops had welded, um, wet and worn away, had welded a chunk of metal on, and that's why it's um, there's less room, there's less clearance for the depth for the adjustable depth stop to clear so that's why that one catches sometimes it's one of them jobs that um, you never get round to do you there you go, forwards would help I like to um, do that see what I've done there when you're plowing up you when you're plowing straight up and down you cannot get into the corner so I'll back the plough right in and plough the plough the corner out on an angle it allows you to get right in there I don't know if other people do I suppose other folks do but that's what I do to get right in but as you can see I kind of cocked this right up um, it's starting so it um so i've got real narrow here and i've got probably i've got one and a half passes in probably about three there i didn't really do myself any favors there but i shall um i shall plow it out it'll it'll all come good when i'm done the old dowels will sort it out As I said, the going up and down is the easy bit. It's the it's the filling in the bits like this and the headlands and that and the corners. That's where um, you can either make a good job or a bad job. It's easy enough to go up and down and get it level, but I've seen some right awful ploughing this year. Um, I was subsoiling one field and going up and down the other side of the road. I, you could oh, it's like someone someone had been in there with a digger big troughs and hills and all sorts of stuff right old mess it was oh, I've got a pile on the deal with now it's a bit of a pain the poles are alright power poles they're not bother at all really but um, uh, these are just a bit of a pain in the the easiest way to do this side is because it's such short work it's just back up to it and draw forward again but I am going to just have to plough a little headland um, around the uh, around the yeah around the pile if it was a pole you can get away without it but um, not these unfortunately of course, you do have to be careful backing up to them that uh, you don't go and look your plough in it. That would be bad. this one real carefully coming up to one of the corner posts that will do we don't want to damage that or the plow Tiny little head on down. We are going to plough it out as well. So we leave the open furrow by the, by the pylon. Well, 
super had to do with this um, this side of it. It's at an angle there where I should be able to um, it should match the plough. So when I back up to the pylon, it um, it should create its own headland. Well, I'll say should be able to plough this last bit out because that's such an angle there. The actual angle of the plough should help us there, and we should be able to just get away without uh, putting headland. done that side of the pylon when I um, do a full pull uh, through no doubt I'll have a bit of um, straightening to do. I should be lucky if I get away with that. through again. Just gonna plough straight through now, hopefully, get it keep it straight. Just gonna bounce through them open furrows. Just like that. Jobs are good. Seabrooks, lovely fish they are. Well, as I said, I like to make a nice job 
well on ploughing. But I've made mats plough them a lot, you know. I like to have it level. I like to have decent headlands. You know, I don't like to have big troughs and ridges in it. I like to bury the trash, do a nice job, but I'm by no means a, you know, a very good plowman. But saying that, a channel to check out is KB6080. Now he's, um, he's uh, runs a very similar kit to us, New Orleans, Vernons, you know, Laley's, that sort of stuff. You know, does similar jobs. And um, one of Jeff's sort of best videos I think he does is his plowing videos. He's a very, very good plowman. Now if you're starting up in the job, you know, you're young and that and you want a few pointers, or even if you're like me, you've been doing the job a while, you want some pointers, hints and tips and that, he is a man to go and look at. He's you know he's he, he's he's way above me in um, in his plowing ability. So I like to make a good job, but I'm nowhere near at um, his sort of level. So he's uh, he's definitely worth checking out. I'll put a link in the description and um, one at the end of the vid as well. But uh, yeah, he's a very good ploughman. And you'll get, um, you know, if you're after some ploughing tips and that, he's uh, he's a man to look at, like, you know. this bottom headland now I've only got uh, short work left to do so as soon as I ploughed the first headland I thought I'd plough this one as I go then I'll plough that short headland and then finish up the top I've had a few light showers like they said they were was gonna cut was gonna be I think there's a little bit more to come yet. We are drilling at the minute. I'm um, trying to get some more in. But it's sort of, at the minute, it's turning into a little bit of replay of last year. Started raining and then don't stop. And been a lot drilled, not around here anyway. It shouldn't be too bad for 
smoothness. I'm ploughing, uh, ploughing it, uh, ploughing the headlands in, which means going out. If that makes any sense. Basically, the plough is pushing the furrows into the field. So that means obviously you work away to the headland, which is <clears throat> quite a bit trickier actually than uh, ploughing ploughing out. Because when you plough out, you start at the outside and work in, so you know you you're going to match up. Obviously, you just keep going until you until you've covered all your unploughed ground. But um, when you're doing it this way, you have to hopefully gauge your initial strike out so that you don't um, so that you obviously you want to be straight if you've got a straight headland um, and you want to catch all the unploughed ground but you don't want to plough too much ground that you've already ploughed if you know what I mean because then you're re-inverting it you know you're bringing trash back up to the surface and then uh, obviously you've got to try and match it up to so that you finish at the margin there so it is it's a lot trickier actually all right let's have a gauge up now whether we what have we got left i reckon there's three left there there ain't two or is there uh, we'll, we'll take it back up if there is definitely three it's worth going back up there to bring it down and end up in this corner um, basically what I'm trying to avoid is running all over the plough ground but we'll see what it's like when we um, when we get back up there I dare say it's going to be three it will be so I might just end up running back down here um, without putting the plough in just so I go an up and a down it's starting to rain a bit heavy now as you see the old mud guards are getting a spattering we can go a bit quicker now now we've come out of the ins and outs and it's a lot smoother This is where it's sort of a uh, typical decent New Orleans wiper. Why they don't have it set like the, you know, like the fence and the fast track, so have the pivot down there so that it cleans a decent bit of screen, I'll never know. Um, but yeah, this is where, you know, where, where a bit of skill comes into the job where you have you're gauging your headland, that sort of thing. And obviously you want it, you know, you don't want no big holes in it and big trenches or anything like that. I'll clear this out as far as I can. Like that. Right, all we got left. There's a bit more than the plows with there, I reckon. pain when you're like one furrow off. I think we could well be. Let me just pull in a little bit. Let's see what it looks like. You know what? I think we'll go with that. I'm nice and parallel to the margin. Yeah, that ain't better. 
I could have got that a lot better for the camera, could I really? Quite often you'll have to take half a width. Um, um, like, you know, uh, so instead of taking a full width here, I'd ride halfway across on this plough bit. So I was taking like two or three furrows, and then you do the same on the way back. But uh, no, that's all right. bit wider here. I'll just back this bit up and just and just plow this little corner. I ain't quite square to it. But that's what it's all about. Yeah we've got a bit of rain now. It's not quite 100% straight this headland, is it? Right, so you want to look where you want to join in, about here. But of course you want to join in with your back furrow. So I'm going to drop my back furrow in the open furrow I've already got. And I'm just going to just gently just run her up here. up to the corner that really is coming down now that is we can like so there we go that's that headland done Well, we're being on the T7 hasn't bothered it having um, having to fill that bigger top, you know, where the tire is because obviously the bigger tires in. That ain't made no difference at all. As you can see, it's mashing up a tree. this bit here because we've got a buck heap here and whether you've seen that on the camera or not I don't know but um, that's why I'm not playing this bit Be able to come back in a 
in the furrow, but it'll just split it up to make it look a bit tidier. I say chaps with hydraulic vary well find this bit easy because they can just vary the plow in and out the suit. Got that luxury. This is the sort of this is the area where you can end up with big troughs if you're not careful. I'm not riding on uh, in the Clara. A bit of a channel there, but nothing too major. Do this year, um, well, it'll probably be on this to be fair. Um, I can't say how I'm going to get that uh, uh, the back end oil and that done on that TW before I need to use it. Um, so, yeah, more likely to be this route again. Oh, I'll probably stick the old camera on again. And I'll have a little chat, but there we are, we've just about nearly pulled out. Pretty tidy, I reckon. There you go. Yeah, it's pretty miserable now, as you can see. But look at them boards. They're shot up a treat now, aren't they? Shot up a treat. I'll have to uh, get back and chuck some waste oil at them. Keep them clean, but... Uh, yeah, it's a pretty tidy rig, isn't it, really? And uh, right, it's time for me to get out of here before it gets any wetter and um, go and get in the drive. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed that little vid and I'll see you on the next one. Ta-ta!